Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Stephen Malin Live here on YouTube, where every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we write some music. We always have a lot of fun with these streams, and today we are talking about The Boar Night, which is a musical theater podcast. Now, for those of you not familiar with the audio drama world, it is taking the world by storm. And if you're a music composer, then you should pay attention to this. Obviously, film and TV shows and, and video games have been out there for decades now, but podcasts have, well, they've also been out there for about 15 years now. Um, but there's something very special. There's this uh, very small niche called audio dramas, which are stories very much like film, but it's without the visuals and it's sound effects, it's sound design, and it, these shows need a lot of music. And I recently, about, I don't know, four or five years ago, um, more or less started a partnership with um, Fool and Scholar Productions, and they have come out with a ton of shows over the years. Probably the most famous would be The White Vault, followed by Dark Dice, and multiple others that I've had the opportunity to work on, such as the Liberty franchise. And The Boar Knight is their latest project. And if you followed them, I don't know if you do or not, but if you follow Fool and Scholar Productions, if you go back to their origins about six years ago, maybe it's been longer. Um, my relationship with them goes all the way back to when um, on YouTube, I was known as VG Piano Man, and I had these video game piano covers, and I was doing my first and last to date Kickstarter, which is what I was, when I was doing the best of SNES, the best of SNES piano album, which still has a crazy amount of traffic on Spotify, which blows my mind that it's still really popular. Um, I think that was 2012, so I guess it, it really has been eight years. It's pretty wild to me. Um, but here we are, and all these years later, and, and that Kickstarter project, at the same time, um, this guy, Travis, Travis Vingroff, with with his band, they were uh, creating this uh, Boar Knight, the legend of the Boar Knight uh, soundtrack. And it was the story of Nathaniel the Boar Knight, of how he traveled across the land to save the princess, whatever. It was kind of a cliche, um, video game tropes. But what's cool about it is they they wrote a song or they did covers of video game tracks throughout the entire album. Um, and it's just a really cool album and became friends with Travis. And here we are all these years later. And he has decided to bring that back and to more or less create a, I don't know, a reimagining of that character. And so the boar knight, Nathaniel, he's literally that. He's a, he's a knight and a boar. And... What we're doing right now is we're working on a musical theater show, uh, podcast. It's weird to call it a podcast. It, podcast is the medium by which people will consume it, but it's it's a show. It's a literal musical theater um, where I'm writing Broadway-esque songs. I'm having real singers on this. I'm having real instrument players um, record this. So it's it's the exact same process as writing for a Broadway musical it's just, there's no visuals, there's no like play. But what's cool about this is it's still gonna have a storyline, it's gonna have actors, and then these songs are gonna come in and out throughout the different episodes. So right now, uh, we don't have a, a solidified number of episodes, but it's something like 16, I believe. And I've been commissioned to do, I believe about 13 of them. They, they already have some pre-recorded songs and such that they, they wanna use. So if you have followed my live streams up to this point for the Boar Night, which if you have been following me, I've been doing these on Twitch up to this point. But now that we're that I'm 100% on YouTube, um, doing these live composing streams every Tuesday and Thursday, the Boar Night, it, moving forward, it's going to be exclusively here on YouTube. And I've been given license and permission to stream as much as I'd like with these songs. So Today we are doing episode seven, which is the song called A Cutthroat You. You meaning like a pun, it's it's uh, a sheep. So this is a sheep shanty, and I think I put it in the description. Um, I want to read this. I just think it's really funny, just so you have a, an idea of what we're doing here today. Uh, it's the story of sailing and eating the finest grass from every plundered isle. Bah! So uh, there's a lot of uh, funny 
um, sheep puns in here. And so my process for this is I am the first point of contact in this whole process because I'm the composer. So what I do, and, and actually I'm really a songwriter in this aspect of the project. Um, so what I do is I take the notes from the producer, which I have in front of me now. I take the notes and I do my very best to create a tune. So like a melody and chords and a glorified piano sketch is more or less what we're doing. And so the idea here is I'm taking the notes, converting them into like literal musical notes. And what I'm delivering at the end of this stage one process is I'm delivering the melody it doesn't have to have words, but it's just a melody that's, it could be la, 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 that kind of thing, and the chords. And I'm trying to do this in the most succinct way possible. So I'm giving like a musical intro, a one verse, one chorus, and if we're going to do a bridge or some other, you know, traditional song structure, then yeah, then that's what we're going to do. Um, then I'll also include that in this demo. So this demo gets sent to the producer. The producer, if they approve it, comes back with the lyricist and they actually put words to all of my melodies. And then step three uh, is when I actually take the song and sing it, basically just go into my DAW as you're gonna see here in a minute. And I go in there and I write and sing. So I actually sing the words and I don't have the greatest singing voice, but it doesn't really matter. I just, the purpose of that is to have a, a tangible demo and then that gets sent to the orchestrator. And for this project, I'm working with Mike Petri, who's a great friend that I've worked on, uh, I guess, I don't even know how many projects now. Not, not a ton, but uh, at least two or three. And he's just been an awesome orchestrator. He works with Disney and he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows my process and how, what I send him with MIDI data and with audio tracks and whatever. He knows how to convert that into an arrangement. And then that final arrangement gets sent, I guess, what are we on? Step five now. That gets sent back to the producer. If he approves that orchestration, then it goes to the singers who then record all of their parts. And then the final step is it goes back to Mike, who is going to be the mixer as well. So he's kind of double dipping there, getting paid for both of those jobs. Um, but it maybe in a normal situation, it'd be a, a different person. It'd be another uh, person on the audio team. And what we're doing is we're doing all of these songs at the same time. So here we are in episode seven. I've already done five because um, I'm not responsible for episode six. That's someone else's job. Um, but that's, that's the process. And so up to this point, I have recorded all of the um, initial demos. And so right now they're all in that phase two, which is where the lyricist is coming up with all of the lyrics. And then... I'll be creating the demos and kind of going from there. So it's a very lengthy process. Um, this is a nine, about a nine month process to create this large number of songs, but that's pretty typical. That's, you just can't rush this stuff because so much creativity that goes into it and there's so much back and forth. Um, it's a very different process than working on a film or a video game, which are, you could say film is much, much shorter to use like a one to two month process. Whereas a video game could be longer, but it's very spread out. I've noticed with video games, it's you write tracks, like at least on the projects I've worked on, I typically write one to two tracks per month um, instead of like film, which is, you know, have seven cues by next Monday. You know, it's just a totally different thing. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to do today is we're going to jump into from scratch. We're going to write the, the phase one track for episode seven. And as always, since this is a live stream, I love talking with you guys. And I do want to um, reply to some of your comments here now that we have the intro out of the way. So what's up, Tiago? So glad you're here. Rob, Jose, a bunch of others who are piling in here. Uh, so glad you're here. I hope this is fun for you. And, and I love when you guys ask questions. And I love when I can help you just understand something a little bit better. Because none of us are no one's born with all the knowledge, right? It's good to spend time with people working. And I know I'm, I'm rambling quite a bit here today, but I'm hoping that for many of you, this is your first time watching me on YouTube Live. And this is obviously the beginning of 
this project here on YouTube. So I wanted to just take a little bit more time to explain what we're doing and, and all that kind of stuff. And I do want to want to say that um, for anyone who has not had the opportunity to spend time with a mentor, spend time with an actual composer working, it's one of the most invaluable things you can do with your time. And that's something that's really marked me in my past. Once I had some education under my belt and some experience under my belt, I sought out as many composers as I, as I possibly could. People like Jason Graves going and visiting his studio for a day. Uh, people like Grant Kirkhope, people like Austin Winery, people like Penka Kuneva, and, and a bunch of others. And my career has been marked by spending time with the pros. And even though many of you can't do that, maybe because of you're in quarantine right now and, and you're not very mobile, and I hope that doing these live streams is a little bit of a solace for you, a little bit of a respite, that you can get that same type of experience just hanging out and watching me work. And this is not for my own self-promotion and vain glory, whatever, but what I really hope you get from this is I really hope that you will sit down and kind of observe the thought process and the methodology behind what I do because I really believe that if you start to practice some of the things that I'm doing, it's going to speed up your workflow too. I mean, years ago, I never would have imagined doing this, never, um, doing, doing live composing streams. And to date, I don't know anyone else that does this. I hope more of you will, will pick up a camera and just start going um, because I, I, I understand that as a composer, it's really hard to make something like this engaging. And that's probably a big turnoff for people. You know, why would I want to sit and watch someone compose for an hour or two, right? But I think that there's something so valuable. So I hope that you'll take these moments really seriously. And perhaps if, if you are new to composing or you're just like really trying to get your if you're trying to build this a career, let's be honest, if you really want to take this seriously, then I hope that you'll get out a piece of paper and start taking some notes. Not that my way is the right way, but I've been doing this long enough now that I have a process that works every single time. And my encouragement for you is that you will at least try what I do. If you don't like it, don't do it. But at least try some of the things that I talk about and teach that way you can see for yourself if it does work and you might find yourself a really nice shortcut that saves you 10 years of doing it a harder way. So that's kind of the, the mentality behind why I do this in the first place. So I hope that this is encouraging for you. What's up, Wilson? Uh, Tiago says in the chat, I found the channel by your video about how to compose like Final Fantasy and I liked it so much. Well, awesome, dude. Um, I want to do more videos like that and I have to be, I have to, openly confess that videos like that Final Fantasy video and the, the Zelda one, a little bit older, those take so much time, but I also see the benefit of doing them. But those are like, it takes multiple weeks to do one of those videos versus like a music business video where I just turn it on and talk. Um, so that's why you don't see as many of those, but I keep hearing that. So if any of you watching now want to see more of a certain type of content that I make, please let me know. That's what the comments are for. I, I want this to be a two-way street. Um, and a little side note, I reply to literally every single comment on YouTube. And sometimes it's hundreds. And I just make myself do it because I, I think it's valuable to have that validation. But anyway, um, there you go. I guess I'm in a very talking mood right now. Uh, so let's get some, some music, shall we? So here we go. Let's go into Cubase. I'm going to take a little water break here for a second. And while I do that, I want to play the reference track for today. It's really good to have reference tracks. Always ask your clients for reference tracks. They are not a crutch. They allow you to speak the musical language that they are speaking. So this song today is heavily inspired by Skinny Lister, which I hadn't heard of before today. Um, but I want to play the reference track it is a song called Rollin' Over. So let's pop over to the YouTubes, which is kind of meta because you're already on YouTube. Um, but, but let's listen to this. Let's slice that. Roll 
Alrighty. So that is the reference that we're working with today. Now, obviously that is very different than a lot of the music I typically write and that's okay. Um, I think one of the most fun parts about working on a musical is you have a lot of genres of music represented and it, it's very inspiring because I don't typically write in this indie, indie pop folk style. Uh, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to try. And the first thing I notice that I think I want to emulate here today <clears throat> is the tempo. So the tempo, I, uh, I mapped it out earlier. It's 112. So quarter note equals 112. It's in a 4-4 four, four time. You have a kick drum, four on the floor, which is very typical of that style. And so what I've done in Cubase, just kind of starting off here is I did exactly that. I just did a kick drum that keeps going. Just have that sucker going. And then I took an accordion, which I heard a lot in that track. And accordion is a fantastic instrument to choose for this project because Travis, who is the producer, actually plays accordion. That's like his entire background. I know, super weird, but how cool is that? And so any chance that I, like this has happened every single time. Every time I've written a track for one of his projects, and if I can just sneak in some accordion, he just lights up and then he goes and records it. So it's just another real instrument we can get into the track always increases the quality. So hearing an accordion in the background of that song is very inspiring and it makes me want to write for it. So what I'm doing here is I'm using an accordion from Uvi. Or UVI, I learned recently. I've, I've been saying it wrong for years. Uh, UVI, and they have the World Suite, which is my favorite, one of my favorites, uh, when it comes to world instruments that you really can't find anywhere else in like an orchestral library. It's you, you, it's just a fantastic place to look. They have almost everything in existence: weird flutes and percussion instruments and things that are hard to find. So they have some really good uh, accordion patches. <laughs> And now that I've worked with a live accordionist enough times, he would agree that this sounds really, really good. And it sounds very accurate. And so all I've done is did like a polka. That kind of thing. So that's what I heard in the track. So all I did is I just created a little D major on the off beat. And that would, in my opinion, that'd make a really good intro. And then when we get to the verse, I just marked it out with my marker tracks up here and color coded them. Um, the verse, I feel like is gonna be very simple where we can, in this particular song, it, I heard in the reference track, a whole lot of one, four, and five chords, which are just your major chords within a, a major scale. So that's very easy music theory here today. But I also know that Travis likes when I modulate on a repetition, so I will likely kind of in a video game homage because this whole thing has a video gamey feel to it because it's, you know, mythical fantasy creatures and stuff. It's not just a straight pop song. So we got something that helps to get that in there um, with our harmonies. And so in this instance, because we're in D major, and if we go to the four chord, it'd be a G. And then the A chord is the five chord. So that would make a whole lot of sense to do that kind of thing. And then the occasional minor six. I, I could write the whole song like that. But if I want to be interesting, probably do something in the Mixolydian mode, which just means I'm going to a flat seven or a flat six. If you want to call it a flat six Mixolydian, Mixolydian, Mixolydian scale or mode so that would be a c major that'd be a flat seven and then the b flat that's a really easy way to get that fantasy world in there because that is the most age-old um approach so you hear that all over final fantasy music you hear all over um Koji Kondo music in, in the Japanese Nintendo style, that kind of thing, right? Uh, so it's, it's all over the place. So I do want to label my chords now that we're getting into it. So that's just a D 
and every other bar is a D. What is that? Ya da da. It's just a D um, suspended. Yeah, it's a suspended four chord, a D suspended four. And then one of the cool things about a DAW is I can literally just copy and paste. Um, but I am going to turn my grid on, so it's way easier to do this. Bop, 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 bop. That's basically it. We just kind of copy that. Cool. Pretty simple. And yes, Jose in the chat says the pentatonic melody stands out very much too. I agree. Um, and then I grabbed a bass pizzicato, also from UVI. One of the best ones I've ever heard. And I just did a little groove on a D major. And what I hear is a lot of this, it has a polka folk influence. So that's just where there's a kick drum going on every downbeat. And then you have the accordion on the offbeat, mm -bop, mm -bop, mm -bop, right? Which I think really helps to sell the whole sheep shanty thing, right? We're on a ship. We have these evil sheep talking about nefarious plundering of the, the islands around. So it needs to have almost an over the top cutesy vibe. And that um, polka, mm -bop, mm -bop, going back and forth, really helps to sell it. And without going full force with like a tuba, I don't want to go that hard. I think a, a, a bass pizzicato helps to sell the idea without going overboard. So, <laughs> overboard, get it? matter of 60 seconds I just started playing what I think might make a cool um, vocal line like the actual chorus the main part of the song so I just took a piano whatever and played this think Jose nailed it by saying it's a pentatonic sound and this is what you get in, in folk pop music all the time which is the the o's right whoa that kind of thing where it's the whole band the whole all the male vocals are are doing unison o's or ahs that kind of thing so i think whoa and maybe not that part but um we're the sheep shanty. That's really easy to, to say a lot of words. And then maybe I also created this little bridge, this potential bridge section. And seriously, I did this in about two minutes, just prepping before the stream, which just goes to show how inspiring this idea is. And I feel like with this album, I haven't had much difficulty writing it because each track is so different that it just allows me to experiment and have a lot of fun. That'd be a really good whoa. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. That'd be really cool. I don't know if he wants to do like a squeaky voice or anything, um, but that might be kind of cool to octave shift it or something to sound like chipmunks. Because we actually have another song that I've already done, which is called Memory Mining Moles, which is literally these little pipsqueak moles that kind of thing um and we sped up the vocals to make it sound uh like the little pip squeaks so uh, you never know whoa 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 wh
Right, so that could easily have a lot of Latin influence if we wanted to, but I think we want to stick to the, the, the polka folk. So that's what I have so far. I really have not spent much time on this at all, so I'm hoping that we can have some fun over this next hour or so and blast it out. And as always, your comments are welcome. And let me take one more moment to read the notes to you so we can all be on the same page here, quite literally. Um, so yeah, as I said before, this is the story. Here's, here are the notes. A sheep shanty telling the story of the sheep sailing the many seas of the world. They're sailing and eating the finest grass from every plundered isle. The pirate sheep are clearly the bad guys, despite the instrumentation. So that's kind of given me the liberty and the license to do something cutesy and fun, even though they're nefarious. You know, they they have evil motives, but they're cute. So it's it's a fun juxtaposition, I think. And then producer says, um, <laughs> straight up skinny lister style sh- sea shanty. So skinny lister was the link we listened to earlier. He says, so many woolly puns. All the pirates are sheep. Captain Black Wool wants to be the first pirate to sail every sea and plunder the undersea of its riches. So we have, I love that. There's Captain Black Wool. There's going to be a lot of just goofy puns throughout this thing, which this team is fantastic. They have an incredible lyricist. Um, The songs we've done before have been really fun. So So I want to make sure that the music is like over the top fun. And that way, the lyrics are really where it's going to cut through that they're evil, right? Because you don't want to just give it away. You don't want to have some brooding. I don't even know how to do it with accordion. (laughs) Like, you don't want to go super dark. Like, it just, they're not menacing, right? They're not, they don't don't mean to be bad, you know? Uh... So we, we want the music to kind of reflect the innocence of the visuals that we would see if it was live. And this is really where the role of music is played. It, it's a second narrator. It allows us to get the environment and the vibe of the tone in a way that we just can't do because we don't have visuals. So music has to do a lot of heavy lifting. Anyway, where shall we go with this? This is going to be fun. I want to play with this uh, choir pad because I've used this in a few tracks so far and it's so much fun. It's so over the top, uh, Broadway. And we're going to have a live choir anyway, you know, live singers, so we might as well. You could even go so far as to like someone does the bah, like sheep, that kind of thing. What do you think about that? Is that a little too poppy? That might also make a cool bridge. I kind of already did that chord progression. That's kind of cool over here in this fake bridge. 
What Shall Be the Bridge. get this uh so yeah, da, da, bum, bum. <laughs> what's up daniel welcome to the, the live stream uh yeah i talked earlier about this is the the uvi accordion from the world suite really good this is just a choir pad from omnisphere it's the gospel church choir And this is easily a, uh, a, a bridge that we'll do twice. So let's call that bridge two. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to change the chord progression. So let me write these out so it's a little bit less confusing. So I'm doing B minor. Let me get the piano. each B A D two three four G G A B if you are new to songwriting anytime you can start on a minor six that's a great place to start a bridge if you want to write a chorus actually a verse the best place to start a verse is the four which I guess we're in G major all of a sudden. I don't know. We're going to modulate. It's cool. Ooh, that's even better. Let's do a D major. That way it's more shocking when we do a modulation. So I'm going to copy all of those markers, put them over here. favorite modulation ever to keep walking down and do major chords it's totally unexpected but allows the repetition to still happen so we're gonna go G F sharp minor E major it's such a cool progression because it I'm trying to remember where I first heard this it was a Wendy and Carlos or Wendy Carlos um who remembers the show? It was, it was a TV show about, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, uh, starring uh, Keith or Sutherland and, you know, the guy from 24. And he had an autistic son with special powers. But I don't remember the name of it. Who, If anybody knows the name of that, let me know in the chat. Um, but the, the opening theme to that, that was the first time I've ever heard that. And it's such a simple little chord progression. But that walk down into a different key and then allows you to repeat. It's such an interesting, that was a very uh, influential score for me. And I didn't really know it at the time. Oh, I want to, I want to know what the name of that is. I know someone out there knows it had something to do with time. It was like clocks, like Touch, thank you, Daniel. That's what it's called, yep. And it was piano. So interesting, good, good for you. Bonus points for the day. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do here in this second repetition of the bridge is I want to do the same chords except for the end. I want to modulate. There it is. 
yeah, touch is the name of the show. He's not just being weird and creepy. Uh, so <laughs> what I want to do here is modulate again. F, G. It's kind of like the, the negative harmony. It's the opposite. It's the opposite harmonic progression. So instead of going down, we're going up. And it freakishly gets us back to D. Which is so cool. Um, Nicholas asks a question. Hey, if I'm looking to do film, video games, scoring as a hobby, do you have any fun things to score to? Well, my best suggestion is to literally pick a clip from your favorite game or, or film and to turn the sound off and to score it. Simple as that. That's actually, that was the bulk of my education. Um, I went, I paid over $100,000 to go to grad school to have someone give me a homework assignment of practically every day or every two to three days I had to score one to two scenes from famous films and famous TV shows and main titles and, you know, romantic comedies and action sequences and the whole thing. And I learned more in that two year period than the rest of my life combined. And I think it's because a, I paid a lot of money, so I was going to listen and I was going to take it seriously. But two, I had this, I don't know, this isolated passion to work my butt off to get good. And you can do that for free right now. Just go to YouTube, find a clip. I don't suggest you post what you do. At least it's, you know, maybe in like a private context. Um, Cause there's obviously you'll get copyright banded and banned and your channel will be shut down. Um, but that's a really good way to practice. I would, I would argue the best way to part practice. Cool. Let's take a moment. I know we just started the stream. We really didn't. It's been 40 minutes. Let's listen to what we have so far. I know it's like isolated and weird and whatever. Let's take a quick stretch break. I have to be better about my health, guys. This is something I noticed last week. I did a three and a half hour stream. And afterwards, my back was like dead. So I'm going to be a better human. Hey, Scott. What's up? Welcome. Let's play what we have so far. I'm going to take like a one minute stretch break. You guys got to remind me like at least once an hour. I have to stand up or else I'm just being an idiot. So here we go. All right, cool. Welcome back. Um, so just for fun, I have to do this, guys. Let's take a look. If you have not been graced with the touch main theme, this is from many years ago, but this is what I was referring to, guys. Thank you so much, Daniel, for shouting that out in the chat. Um, let's just take a minute. It's so good. This is literally an inspiration for the track today. So just enjoy.
That's so good. It's so simple. Da, da. just that's so cool hey thanks demo i'm glad you appreciate my recent investment in proper lighting and camera gear and microphone gear and such but yeah and that's so good it's um man simplicity always wins doesn't it like that whole theme you're just walking up. It's so good. It's so good. And that's it's very inspiring for me. But that, um, Wendy and Lisa, those are the composers for that. We need more women composers out there. Just saying. Just a little PSA. Um, they just bring a different sensitivity to music that male composers don't. That's just a fact. Curious, are there any uh, women composers in the audience? Big shout out to you. Um, Because I know that my audience is progressively including women, which I freaking love. I think that's incredible. Because my channel started off as like 100% male. And then it's like slowly, it's like 95 and then 90%. I think we're at like 90% right now. But I love that so much. Anyway, um... Where were we? I don't know. I was doing weird stuff with the, um, I was trying to get my chords. That's what was happening here. So the bridge, all I wanted to do was change this so it's F, G, D. So that is worth just taking a moment and playing in, even if it's just silly choir. I'll even make that a suspended. Like that. Let's play. I like that voicing better. That will go really well back into the chorus right there. So let's uh, quantize all of those goodnesses. There we go. <laughs> Robin, you're so funny. I have no idea what I started doing right. Uh, you went from 100% male audience to 70-30. I mean, they are clearly, just mathematically, I think there's a 100 to 1 ratio of men to women composers out there. It's like a 1%, I'm pretty sure. Um, which is wild. So wild to me why that's the case. But let's let's change that. All right, that's a pretty good place to start. Let's get the bass in there. Um I don't, want, I don't want to go jazz. I want to go folk. So if you want to play folk bass, you do a lot of open fifths and octaves. Like that.
good till the end. So let's get all those in. Those are all mm, 16th notes because they're syncopated. Pick it up where we left off. Let's get that kick drum back in there. I may leave it the whole time because it's so effective. Let's get that bass. The drum, the drum kick is actually my metronome today. Cool, and that repeats <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I haven't quite done all that. Yeah, GG. Doesn't that bass sound so good? That's It's from a very unexpected place. That's from the UVI World Suite. I had the same reaction when I found it one day. Looks like this. The Balk Balkanish. Balkanish double bass. It's so good. It's so unexpected. I use that like for everything now. Anytime I want a bass, it's just so good. Patient, bro. There's the touch progression. Octaves here. And let's find out. Is that really an octave? It looks such a like a tiny little gap. That's eight notes. D D D D. I don't want to do the fifth. But I do like the repetition of this little eighth note because that'll lead us well back into the chorus. So for now, since we don't really have all the information, let's do a little false loop back here to measure 14. That way we will, since I haven't copied and pasted anything over, it'll give us a quick indication of how it will sound to loop there. But it won't make any sense because I don't have any uh, chords there yet. Day, but that's the wrong style. <laughs> Lots of options here. I like it. So what I need to do here is write some chord progressions for the verse and chorus. I like the chorus hanging around on D major. So let's do that because D is our one chord. So that makes sense. Let's keep it there. Which means if we're going to follow a traditional pop song, we want the verse to be on the G chord, which is the four chord, which makes it gives more um, sense to this intro. So I need to delete this because it's now the wrong chord. So let's do something in G. Uh, but it's got to stay in this um, folk. <laughs> oh gosh, 
That's that was funny, Daniel. <laughs> a nice verse it, it, it has enough openness to write a bass um what's the word i'm looking for a simple melody a singable melody end on a five at least in a traditional sense i need to end on a five chord which is a i'm trying to fill in the puzzle pieces here so that's a four chord we'll go to one four walk up to b minor which is the six four one four five and that way the d chord will feel more natural as we hit the chorus so let's put that in. Sometimes I start with a melody. Sometimes I start with the chords. And in this case, because I've already started with a melody to get the chorus in there and everything, I'm just playing puzzle pieces here. I'm, I'm trying to fill in the puzzle because this whole gap was missing, but there are traditional correct chords to choose. And it's like a giant math puzzle, which I enjoy. I haven't even written any notes of music, but I know what it's, what it's functionally gonna do. I just gotta get the right rhythm in here. Now it goes right back to the G. So let's just make the whole chorus one giant D chord. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's actually a pretty standard pop thing to do with this folk style. And yeah, Scott, you're saying that it sounds like a Savannah. That's funny. The ended goal is this supposed to feel like a, a pirate ship, but it's a bunch of sheep singing about how evil they are. So it's like this weird cutesy fun vibe with dark lyrics <laughs> but i will i will um give a filter not a filter but i'll give the um the macro view is that this is meant for children um, a lot of full and scholar productions projects are very mature definitely adult oriented current content just being very dark in nature but then they're, they're also trying to appeal to more mass market by doing more of a children thing. So they're going to be like life lessons taught by funny animal creatures, which is cool. I think it's a, a nice change of direction for them. There we go. So that takes care of this. five chord in there to help round it out. Five five one 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 five five one 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 that works really well to have a syncopated bass line when the uh, kick drum is just kind of driving the background as a constant. So let's copy the verse. Let's keep pumping this song out. Yeah, 
Yeah, Demo, uh, audio dramas are amazing. There's such an interesting emerging genre which has taken the world by storm. Like millions of listeners. It's not some small thing. Looks like my quantizing is not working 100%, so let me go back through my bass line, just double check some things, listen to it once. Sounds like my verse was off. There it is. favorite functions of Cubase. There are multiple functions that I like it over other DOWs, but this one right here, this little solo of just the track I have open, was such a cool feature. I didn't have to go in and like hit the solo button because notice I already have multiple things soloed, but when I go into a track to edit the MIDI, it just, if I want it to, it will just solo that. Such a useful feature for quick editing like this. Big fan. I have hardcore fallen in love with Cubase. I didn't know if I would. It took me a little while to get used to it. It came from Logic. But if you've noticed a trend, go look at all of the, like if you watch any 2020 um, interviews, like recent interviews of AAA composers, almost every one of them is using Cubase now. And a lot of them swore that they would never leave their Mac or they would never um, leave Logic. Here we are. I called it like a year in advance. Like that's gonna be a fun vocal line cool now we actually have some stuff to work with so let me get a couple things situated here let's get the chorus in so i'm just uh making sure i have a bass line for every section of the song and then gluing them all together with the glue tool just merges all the midi into one giant midi track which is very cool Now we can test out what we wanted to earlier, which is to have, one second, which is to have um, this loop into the chorus from the bridge to hear what it sounds like. My melody notes were wrong, but you get the idea. So now we're making some serious progress here. And that's all that this is the the full length that I would send for the demo because now that, that the producer has each of the sections and I can, you know, type in an email where every section starts with the time code, he can play around with it and he can chop it up, whatever. He's an audio editor, so it's not like a big deal. You know, he might say, Hey, let's do three verses in a row or something. Like he'll he'll give me that suggestion. I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Let's uh, get some strings in here. And I'm not really trying to fully produce this right now, but I want to give it as much of a folky style as I can. Oh, man, I have to get a guitar out, don't I? I think that's like a prerequisite for this. Uh, I'm not great at MIDI guitar, but I'm going to do my best here today. UVI for the re to the rescue again. There's a lot of guitars in here. But they are like African guitars, but I think they have this one might might do a Celtic guitar.
well, here's the thing. I could grab the guitars behind me, but for this particular project, um, we have a guitarist. So they're, whatever I play, they'll, they'll strum it or whatever. They'll, they'll make it sound pretty later. So I'm really not worried about that. picked versus strummed but we'll see <laughs> you're so funny nikki so what i'm trying to do is Whenever you play guitar, I'm not super great at guitar, but the the distance of the strings on a guitar really lend itself to a lot of open fifths and a lot of two chords. That kind of stuff. So anytime, if you're trying to make a MIDI guitar sound more realistic, don't just play a D chord. That's not really something people play because you have to really... Be, do an awkward angle to try to play that, right? It's not a triad. It's not a triadic based instrument like a piano. It's not evenly spaced. So instead, anytime you can get four notes in, or even just three notes, anytime you can leave like two notes on the top, that kind of thing. Isn't that cool? Um, it's just a trick. It's because I, I do play guitar. Just I, I'm not great at guitar, but I know how the instrument works. So that's why I can write for it in a MIDI context. And that way, when it translates to the guitarist, he'll know exactly what to do. Um, that it, it won't face him one bit. And he'll sound 15 times better than what I do. <laughs> um, Demo says, when you're doing chord work on MIDI guitar, do you play it in the same way you would on piano or do you voice chords differently? Oh, yeah, I just answered that quite a bit so hopefully that's helpful um so i want to keep this whole four chord four note arpeggio thing going a good that's a very natural way to play it Blech. i'm gonna turn it down too it's so loud one more try and we'll get out of here Just move on with, with <laughs> move on with the track at this thing I feel a little bit more comfortable than I did when I started um, I also want to get all my chords in here otherwise I don't really know what I'm doing there we go 
This is why I write my chords out. They're literally for myself to see when I'm playing through these passages. I don't have to like memorize it. That's dumb. It's right in front of me. All right, final pass of Le Guitar. <laughs> Evil playing guitar achieved. Cool. switch in there i went too low on my guitar whoopsies all right it's going pretty well there for a while let me just do a quick scooch scooch on yonder do 16th notes and we'll be good to go and then i'll cut it off right there at the bridge write it write it fresh again what this reminds me of like this exact guitar Reminds me of Chrono Cross. It sounds fake it has this like ps1 vibe quick name a tune Not stairway to heaven. That's Aerith's theme from Final Fantasy VII. Ah, oh, come on, E minor.
lines are funny. I thought you meant just name any tune. Well, that's that's also kind of cool. But not now. Okay, let's fix our guitar because I just played all kinds of key switches that are not supposed to be played. Well, there we go. I wonder if I can lock these key switches. I don't know. That would be a very, very useful button. You can do it in contact, but I don't know if you can do it here. Oh, well. I hate key switches so much. I know. Isn't that so true? Man, Aeros theme just gets me every time. Different voicing, please. correct except for the darn melody but hey i'm not bad <laughs> get it bad because you know sheep. <laughs> my jokes are so bad can you tell i'm a dad a bad dad <laughs> quarantine is getting to me A good track for horns. Um, let me go back to the reference track and let's just take a quick listen to see how close we are to the reference. I'll keep the home fire burning as I walk roll back to your side. So there is a very noticeable electric line there that it's hard to not have but i'm wondering if i can do that with some accordion something like that to be a little bit different i don't know that acoustic guitar is really wrong <laughs> which makes me really sad right now let me see if i still have I don't even know if I have any good guitar libraries. That's something I need to get. Um, I just don't do it enough, and I, I would rather play my own guitar. Um, I don't know if I... I don't know. Let's find out. It's inevitable. Give me a moment. In the meantime, tuning this blasted thing. Any questions? Let's be totally real. This is something I actually like preach about. You can do something so much better when you just grab the instrument. than MIDI, <laughs> even though someone's going to be doing it properly later. That gives me all the hope in the world I need. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Alrighty then. Let's see how much better we can do in like 10 seconds versus all that nonsense. So I'm going to do, it's gonna be a really crappy recording, but it'll set the tune that we need. Um, let me do this properly and do my, let me look at my mic inputs real quick. Number three, I have a microphone just for this occasion. The guitar, right there, the guitar. Whoa, I can't be too loud, this baby's sleeping and stuff. However, I think I can make this work. Give me two seconds. So all I'm doing here is I'm taking a condenser mic instead of the Shure dynamic mic that I'm currently talking into. Dynamic mics are not great for guitar or instruments. So quick tip here is whenever you have a condenser mic, all we're trying to do is get the microphone to be placed right around the 10th or 12th fret or directly across from the sound hole of the guitar. I also have to switch, switch headphones for this. Otherwise, the um, audio from my open back headphones, my Grado the the leather ones you just saw the wooden ones would bleed through all right so i want to make sure that you can actually hear the guitar which you cannot very well Awkward angle. Oh well, you'll hear it in a second. Just let me do this, okay? Just let me do it. Oh, it's on mute. What an idiot. What a noob. <laughs> Do one more pass with a pick and hopefully keep this short, short and sweet. One more time. 
time we'll be out of, out of this guitar hole. <laughs> all the misery I will put you through today. Give me a second. I was not expecting to play guitar today. <laughs> you guys were like, that guitar's out of tune. Oh, it's so out of tune. I don't even care. I'll uh, show you why in a second. All we really want is the strumming sounds. We're going to EQ out the notes anyway. So, perfect timing. Let me actually, uh, let's take a one minute coffee break while I get this mic nonsense back to normal. And I'll see you in a sec. Stick around. And if you feel like that guitar was out of tune, give me like a guitar emoji or something. You guys are awful and amazing all at the same time. So much guitar love there. I don't claim to be a guitarist. Um, quick question for you though. I was just thinking about it while I'll tidying up a little bit. Should we go with shaker number one, the egg shaker? Or shaker two? What do you think? 
type a one or a two in the chat while I get set up here. Um, I want to put the use the same mic to do this, but we're going to call it Shaker. I think it's going to add so much life to this thing. Boom, 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 da, da, boom, boom. So far, we got the vote for the sh the egg shaker versus the the big ones, the big guns. That's awesome. You have the same shakers. Cool. You never know when a shaker is going to save your butt. So I'm going to stand up, record some shaker. I'll try it first with the egg. That's my that's my gut reaction here. And let's see if this will pick up and be a okay. I'd be careful with shakers not to turn the volume up, the input too high. Let's get shaken. I also have a little tambo shaker. Found it. That's probably the coolest of them all. Let's do egg shaker. Let's also do tambo. It's like a baby tambourine, tambourine stick. It's pretty cool. This one you have to be like. Gotta turn your volume way down. Let's do it. Cool. I was just cleaning up over there, getting all that stuff out of the way. 
Um, so let's see what we can do. Um, I may not want to use all of those items. I do want to first start with the guitar because you guys are all saying how awfully out of tune it was. So what I'm going to do is put a Pro Q filter on here, a mono Pro Q. And let's do a little bit of tweaking. Okay, let's do a lot of tweaking. So we basically just want the strum sound. It's kind of all we want out of guitar anyway. Sounds like this by itself. Oh, that's even more attitude than I remembered. Again, a real guitarist will be playing this later, so I'm really not too concerned. I like that little egg shaker, that's good. So all I'm gonna do here is find a good like four bar phrase and copy a bunch. Notice I don't want it to be quantized. I just want to find a good groove. So let's find, what is that? One, two, three, four. So that's a great amount right there. I'm literally going to copy and paste it to the bar. I feel like that's more of like a farm animal kind of vibe so here it is put it all together let's give it the same uh, pro Q treatment here It all shakes together, that's right. Turn that down. All right, here's a little tambo shaker. Four of those, copy and paste. Notice I'm not doing one bar or two bars because it's not enough variation between the rhythm. Four bars is really the smallest amount you should ever copy and paste. Eight bars would be more ideal, but I don't believe I even did eight bars that were really solid, like on beat. So what we're going for is a groove, not perfection, right? Because perfection actually sounds weird. So this one definitely needs some EQ, love. Probably needs more mid than high. Let's mix that with the egg shaker. There we go. With the guitar. That guitar is just abysmal, but again, we're really trying to just get the uh, attack. And nope, nothing is quantizing. No, I know because this button right here the AQ, the auto quantize button is not on. So I know it's doing exactly what I want it to do. Guys, it's so out of tune. Yeah, 
either way, it's just a little demo that the real guitarist will know what to do. And I at least wanted to have that in there for like the, the up and down strokes. Mm, down, 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 up, down, down, that kind of thing. I also haven't added my accordion yet. Let's do it. in blue moon when they're um there we go 16th We had the the intro in the chorus would be the same. Interesting. I think my verse can also be better. I did a better version. Whoops, I did a better version of it the second time around. Nab that. Scroll on over, mosey on over. Isn't that choir so much fun? It's so unexpected, but I've been using it in most of the tracks for this. It has such a fun sound. All right, so there we go. Now let's uh, take the, the glue tool, glue, and then let's make sure everything is on a downbeat, or I mean an upbeat. And then quantize the 16th, and it should fit everything gloriously. Now that, that MIDI guitar is growing on me, <laughs> because the other one's so bad. Come on.
accidentally like stole the verse. And yes, I need to take all of the accordion and uh, move it back a little bit. And I'll do that in just a moment. Once I get all of the MIDI data in, the entire patch has to be slid to the left to fix that attack issue. <laughs> I'm also gonna steal, not steal, but copy the chorus from here. Anytime I have a good take, I'll keep it twice. Hey, thanks for subscribing. Appreciate you. I hope you guys see that. I don't know if you see when people subscribe. Hopefully you see it, but someone just described and I appreciate you. Oh, Animal Crossing. I haven't played that new game. I don't really care to. I actually hate Animal Crossing, but I love the music. It's cool to hear that there's some influence there. Yeah, you do see the subscribe. Hooray. sheep who haunt your dreams and we do it in style okay this is such a mess these are all eighth notes anyway, so it doesn't matter. That's the only challenge with quantizing to 16th notes, you know, when like 1% of them are actually 16th. Check out. Dum, bum, bum, bum. Ah, almost there. Check out. Boom, boom. What is this mess of chord? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Bum, ba, da, bum, bum. Did anyone ever play Earthworm Jim? Those old classic SNES games had some pretty awesome accordion music. Just saying. <laughs> Actually change pitches here. Gross. Also reminds me of Mario Paint. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, the accordion is from UVI. It's the UVI workstation, World Suite, Eastern accordion. It's pretty good. Who 
is Cass, Demo? What game is it? I feel like I'm missing something very important about video game culture. I don't know who Cass is. If I've played the game, I would know the character, but clearly I haven't. Okay, I'm really getting tired of these dumb quantization. Blah. Yeah, it's an accordion. Woohoo! Why are eighth notes so challenging? Computer. Computer, because I told you that they're 16th, that's why. Oh, thank you. Okay, that was exhausting. Cleaning up that nonsense. Okay, so here is the trick of all tricks. Take said MIDI data, take your looper bar and go back a little bit, and then literally notch it, probably by a 30 second note there. You can barely see it, but I... Move the whole thing over. Where are you? This way. No, this way. I don't know how cameras work. This way. So now it is a 30 second note sooner. Let's see if it helps. So it's actually too much. So let's try a 64th note left. Oh, Breath of the Wild, duh. Oh yeah, that's the song. Something like that, right? I hate Breath of the Wild, guys. Super unpopular opinion, but I just, I, uh, I like removed it from my memory. I hate it so much. What sorcery are you talking about, Demo? Is there really a delay settings in Cubase? Teach me your ways. I have no idea what you're talking about. That sounds incredibly useful if that is such a thing. You're saying I can like tell it. Is that what this thing is? What? What is this thing? What? Track delay in milliseconds? That's the greatest thing I've never heard of. What is life right now? Hold up. Hold up, yo. I'm learning stuff from my own stream. Demo, you are a legend. I don't even know how to do this, but let's negative 50. I never knew what that was. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? I, mean, I can like make it perfect. You deserve a virtual hug. But since I can't do that due to quarantine, what song can I play for you? Because you just radically altered my entire world. You know how many, how many times I've had to like MIDI slide crap? Oh my gosh. Demo, what can I play for you? like gave you a dedicated moment of music.
is outside outside island. That's a Wind Waker, right? Um, let's do this. You earned it. You earned it, young one. Okay. We're going to listen to it once and then play it. I think that's what it is. There's my cast version for you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. You just saved the day, my friend. Oh, I was trying to play it. <laughs> this actually works. You ready to get all kinds of crazy? Do it. Let's go all the way.
It does. It doesn't sound like Besaid from uh, Final Fantasy X. There you go. There is the island remix of Outset Island. The folk remix. That worked way too well. That's all I got to say about that. All right, let's get full reels now. So let's make this piratey by doing uh, doing more of like a, a, a minor sixth. It kind of has like this swashbuckling. Let me tell you a tale. As we sail, as we sail across the sea. stuff here. Singable. Na, 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 na. It's uh sixteenth notes. Thank you. 
see that smacking of the the strings with the pick. That sounds cool. Aw. It is the same key. Oh, so good. I love Mitsuda. line. but the lyrics are going to be really like dark. <laughs> As we plunder all your treasure uh, Spinning all the webs of fear this pickup beat.
I do not have lyrics yet. This is the, this is phase one where I write the melody and then the lyricist puts lyrics to it. But I'm just kind of verbalizing what I feel like would be. As as we sail the seven seas, like that is a good line, or something similar. And what I'll typically do is I maybe after we're done or something, I, I, I will typically record like one lyric or anytime I have like an idea that really attaches itself to a lyric, then the lyricist can take it and tweak it to make it more poetic. But us to the chorus maybe ah I'm not I don't know what I feel about this chorus line I don't know if it's the right vibe Let's keep playing. This is probably the hardest part, actually, is finding a good pace of a of a singable line here. But this uh, this is my favorite part, actually. That feels better to me. back to it if we want to, but, um, that feels like more of a shanty to me. do is I'm gonna I'm gonna share 
two different versions for the people to decide. I like both. I'm going to let them decide which one they like better. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's a little bit, I don't know, bouncier. a song here. I should put this here. This is an A chord. I forgot to label that in my chords. So that's over here in the verse. for the future i like it guys so i would love to hear do you think theme one or theme two for the verse here's theme one that one like more of a shanty which is why i chose that one or do you like this one better option two I don't know. I like them both. So for now, I'm going to stick with the first one and deliver that, and I'll do another version. I'll do two versions. Nothing wrong with that, right? Isn't that cool? Well, cool, guys. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for being a part of the fun today. I can't believe it's Thursday already, which means tomorrow's Friday. Um, so next week, next Tuesday, if you want to join me again for the next live composing stream, we'll be tackling a new Monster Sanctuary track, which is a video game I am currently scoring. And my goal moving forward is to, is to more or less do Monster Sanctuary streams on Tuesday and the Bore Night streams like this where I'm writing new songs on Thursdays. And hopefully that'll keep us fresh on both and inspired and hope this is helpful for you guys. So I'd love if you have not liked the video yet, hit that thumbs up. And once this video becomes a replay on YouTube, leave a comment below with 
any thoughts you might have, any questions you might have about this process. I love talking with you guys. I do reply to every comment. If you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please do and hit that notification bell to be notified of every new live stream and video, new videos every Wednesday. So thank you guys for being a part of this and I hope you'll join me on the next one. So let's play out what we have so far and I will see you next time. Oh,